All right, so we're going to start early today. How is everybody doing? I hope everything is well. Let me know. I'm doing a sound check. Check, check, check. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. I assume everybody can hear me well enough. All right. Welcome. So, um... I guess uh, how many people? Oh, it's a small crowd tonight. That's okay. Um, I guess we'll jump into it. Uh, we'll talk about the subject at hand, and then uh, people are late. Uh, too bad. Snooze, you lose. So let's jump into it now. Do let me just queue up this article. Hold on. I thought it'd be interesting for people. All right. So um, here we go. Core piece, I thought it'd be interesting. So, uh, why do programmers say that JavaScript is better than PHP? So, I'm just going to read the piece. And I'm going to comment on this. I think regular viewers of my stream probably know what my opinion is going to be on this one. But, hey, let's just jump in. Uh, so, he goes, why do programmers say that JavaScript is better than PHP? Because they are stuck in 2.11, 2.13 PHP. At that time, PHP was on the decline, lagged behind newer languages, both performance and feature-wise. Coming Come 2018, and PHP is twice as fast, 7.2 is 205% faster than PHP 5, can be compiled or used or use native C frameworks, Falcon. With Laravel, you can create modern apps thanks to Vue.js integration with Babel, and other, you can even transpile PHP into JavaScript. Now, this article is written in 2018. He uh, seems to be an experienced developer. Let me just tell you that PHP 8 is now, which even takes it to a higher level than what it was before. So as of 7.2, you have legacy C-style easy peasy coding for beginners. True. Full OOP, OOP with classes, containers, iterators, interfaces, traits, and with PHP 8, you have even more uh, constructs that are OOP constructs and more syntactic sugar. I've covered that in other videos. Some functional programming features, chain fluent functions, generators, maps, and more. Free enforceable type hinting and checking, something that uh, people like. Unit testing, behavioral testing, package, repository, and manager. Memory usage squeezed out from 20 to 100 megabytes to 2 to 10 megabytes per request. That has to do with the uh, big efficiency upgrades. That's, that has to do with the performance upgrade here, rather. FPM, fast backend, so you can experience blazing Nginx speed on Apache 2. Still crude support for sync programming. All this guy would, uh, uh, would differ in, in that regard. Also, keep in mind that anyone who says X language is better than Y language all the time, doesn't know what they're talking about. So he continues this guy. I love JavaScript and Node.js, but PHP came a long way with PHP 7. And again, we're at, at PHP 8 now, by the way. Being an excellent engineer means picking the right tool for the job so that people who are saying JS is clearly the superior language, while I love the language, most people are wrong. It depends on the project, the scale, the need, etc. Node.js, as PHP, are tools in the tool belt. Everyone has their bias, but someone who is really good in this field is going to know that there's a time and a place for everything. It's our job to figure out that and don't deal in absolutes, especially when it comes to programming. Uh, and somebody says, async programming can be backed by WebSockets with Ratchet PHP WebSockets. I never used that, so I don't have a comment on that. Um, there you go. I just wanted to bring that out quickly. We're already nine minutes in. Um, hold on. Let me just find the spot here. Boom. All right. I just wanted to bring that out because, you know, people who know my channel know that I've been trying to teach that to people for years now. When you find a coder or developer on YouTube telling you this language is better than the other and all other languages suck, uh, you know they're juniors. You know that that's a sure sign of a noobling, a baby programmer. Uh, everybody's got their preferences, of course, but it's all very specific to the job. All right, I assume everything is clear, audio is clear, and the video is clear. Let me know. 
Um, let me get this better in place. Hold on. This is getting on my nerves. There we go. All right, so that's better. All right, so uh, let's see what the questions are, if we got any questions going on. Oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, Coder's Career Path. I didn't mention this yesterday. I'll mention it today. So I go to my desktop. You got the Coder's Career Path here. There's a free webinar. Just sign up to the newsletter below. It's going to help you to understand the implications of working in language A to language B. So what kind of job you get doing C++ versus the kind of job you get doing Python and the type of companies you work for even. So I go in 29 minute video and I cover a whole bunch of different languages, Python, PHP, C Sharp, C++, Java, uh, PHP, JavaScript, etc. So this is a good video for a beginner. All right, cool. So I cover that. Let's go back to the, uh, the live here. Hold on a second. All right, that's it. I'm trying to get to the subjects a little bit more quickly now so people watch the streams. They don't go, oh, i got to wait for half an hour to get to the point. So that's the point. I covered it. Chop, chop, we're done. Um, so I'll get to some questions. We'll be start up at the top of the stream. By the way, how many, where are we got? Uh, 60 people are starting to build up. If you missed the beginning, you can just rewind, watch the beginning part of the stream. You get the answer. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the stream. Very important. Uh, if you don't like my very long hair, then you should give me two thumbs down to show how much disdain you have for my uh, for my topics. Buenas noches. I'm learning multiple languages. Very good. Very good. Good evening from Lakeland, Florida. I just decided to like it because I know it's going to be a good stream based on last night. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning. Hey, good morning. If you're new to stream, this is the official channel salute. Uh, code long and uh, prosper or co long and profit that's the uh, that's this expression here if you notice i don't know if you guys have an eye i switched to another lens so you see how the bokeh is even more insane that's one of the other things this channel is known for is my insane blurry hand look at that it's great and crazy incredible look at that technique isn't that okay get my face and focus focus on my face okay good all right so um let's go on uh, it was different because of the lighting. Ah, so you like yesterday's lighting? Good. What do you think of today's lighting? Not bad? Let me know. Let me know. I'm, I'm experimenting with new sets and stuff. Uh, new lighting. Uh, uh, hey, I don't know. How are you? Hey, Steph, what's up, man? What's up with your contractors? Uh, don't talk to me about that. I'm redoing uh, my kitchen, and it's pretty... Um, I think you're referring to that. Yeah, it's a bit of pain because of COVID. Everything is backed up. Uh, you contact a contractor and they get back to you two weeks later. It's uh, I got a torn up, disastrous kitchen back there. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up, everybody. I appreciate the thumbs up. Come on, guys. Try to, let's, uh, we got 61 viewers. Okay, small audience tonight, but it's even smaller thumbs. Uh, greetings from sunny Los Angeles. Hey, very cool. Thanks for uh, joining, Jess Dog. Thanks for letting me know. Audio is good, 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 good. All right. Hey, Stefan, do you think freshers, freshers, fresh, fresh, freshers in front end should go for jobs like in niche tech like React plus Ruby? <laughs> um, freshers in front. You should go for jobs where you're able to actually, uh, you know, meet the requirements of the job. You know, but if you know the front end, start working in the front end, start finding some small jobs there. If you want to maximize your job potential, you should do f full stack. I recommend that. That's just going to be um, easier for you to get jobs if you do that. Um, yeah, hold on a second. Let's see if I can adjust something here. What's this? This is that's not what I'm looking for. It's the magic. Sorry about this. I'm just trying to configure something here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, it's not that. I'm almost there. I'm just figuring this out. Where is it? Jeez. Do, 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 do. All right, whatever. I can't find it. Um, yeah, okay, let's go on. Uh, let's have a good session. We'll try. I can hear you. Good, 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 good. I'm a senior dev in my, my company, and we use JavaScript daily, and it's a nightmare. Ah, yes. <laughs> 
JavaScript is a weird language. I'll give you that much. Uh, there's no question about that. It's got some uh, peculiar, uh, some peculiar um, behaviors, shall we say? Yeah, that'd be one way of describing it. Where in the hell is that thing? Okay, okay. Zoom and pan. There we go. I found what I'm looking for now. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, let's continue. How are we doing? 60, not bad. Uh, good morning, everyone from Indonesia. Your, yeah, latest PHP is quite form comfortable. Yeah, PHP is getting pretty good nowadays. Um, what's going on? Hi, Stefan. 2.45, 2.45 a.m. in the UK. Crazy stream time. <laughs> Audio and video are good. All right, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Um, yeah, crazy stream time. Indeed. Um... If you look below, I have a link to the Discord channel for this YouTube channel. People asked me to put together a Discord channel, so I did, so you can communicate with each other when I'm not online. I think mobile dev is in high demand, but, but instructors are more interested in web development. Well, I think there's demand in both areas. You just got to do what you like. Hey, Hillary, how are you? Any tips for understanding PHP MySQL better? Um, you got to just start designing uh, databases. Uh, do the CRUD. If you, I think, you think you've got the course. Do the CRUD mini projects. And uh, yeah, do the CRUD mini projects. And then actually just start designing little uh, mini apps using PHP and MySQL, create a few simple tables, connect to them, and uh, take it from there. It's just practice. It's just practice learning how to database design and so on. Uh, off the top of my head. Uh, so can we use JavaScript for backend? Yes, you can with Node. 29-minute... Webinar is great, but my OCD makes me wish it was around up to 30 minutes. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Hey, welcome to the stream. Cheers. Thanks for joining, guys. Uh, yeah, the Boca game is Titus in the biz. Yeah, yeah. The um, That's what I'm famous for, actually. I'm famous for the best Boca. Look at that. My hand is actually losing its form. That's how crazy my bokeh is it's becoming a deformed hand so there you go bokeh just means blurry so there you go um all right started learning javascript very cool cool learning from mishra over the last two years people the technology depends on project analyze the project needs and pick up the right stack is that accurate mr mishra yes it is that is 100 percent. okay when um Experienced developers, when experienced developers hear developers say, this language is the best and those other languages are terrible, you shouldn't learn them, or this technology is the best and other technologies are terrible, never use them, um, what I hear is a baby crying. I hear little babies crying. It's a noob position. That's what it is. Experienced developers will all tell you the same thing as I read in the piece. The languages and the frameworks, et cetera, and the libraries are all tools. Um, that's it. That's it, you know? And so you got to learn to not be in the camp that I like this, I, that this language is the only one I'll ever use. It doesn't work that way in the real world. That's why one of the illusions in the software development in, in the software development world, at least on YouTube, with the with the noobs, is that um, you will learn the wrong language, or you have to learn this technology, or you have to learn that technology. Uh, it's it's such an illusion because if you believe the young nerdlings, if if you're not learning MERN and functional or and and or functional programming with Mongo, there's no jobs. You're done, you're finished, your career's over. It couldn't be further from the truth. All you have to do is go to indeed.com or some other job site, and you'll see clearly that that's all BS. 
fact of the matter is a huge amounts of jobs uh, in all very old and well-established technologies. Java is either number one or number two in all the lists in terms of jobs. Java is 25 years old. Uh, Python, which is number one in many lists now, uh, it's like a 30-year-old language, apparently. PHP is like 20, 25 years old. C, C++, I don't know how old those are. They're like almost as old as me. Um, C Sharp. Uh, I consider in my head C Sharp a newer language, and that came public, I guess, around 1999. Ooh, it's new. Et cetera, et cetera. JavaScript, very old. PHP, very old. SQL, ancient language. If you look in any ranking, all the, all the job and, and, and use, usage is in all these really old technologies. So try not to be, um, get caught up in that game. Try not to get a, caught up in the game that there's a better language. There's no such thing. This is BS. Young nerd, learn, nerdling commentary there. Another reason why it's an illusion that you can learn the wrong language is because let's say for the sake of argument you fall on your head and you decide you're going to learn Ruby one day. You learn Ruby and there's actually there's jobs in Ruby by the way. There are jobs in Ruby. So you learn Ruby which uh, some people like to bash Ruby. I have no idea why certain people like to bash Ruby. But let's say you learn Ruby and then you find in two, three years or five years, whatever it is, you find that there's no jobs in Ruby. For you to be able to pivot from Ruby to Python, a few days work. For you to pivot from Ruby to PHP, a few days work. You get the idea and so on and so forth. It's the differences between the high level languages are minimal, minimal. The syntax is a little bit different. Each language has its peculiar dispositions, if you, if, if, if you will, like JavaScript is a weird language. Like it does things inconsistently, um, but it's still widely, super widely used. Um, so yeah, there'll be a little bit differences here and there, but as you know, if anybody's listening to the stream, programming is about concepts, understanding concepts, having best practices, understanding things like refactoring and, uh, and design patterns. Languages are irrelevant in all that. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid you're going to choose the wrong language. You won't. It's impossible. Okay, I hope that helps. The reason I bring this up, because people are always nervous about this. So it's a message I don't think other people talk about enough. You cannot learn the wrong language unless it is Ruby. That's a joke. People want to hear Ruby jokes. Anyway, let me go on. Um, hey, Steph, thanks. No worries. Can JavaScript be considered a pure functional language? No, I don't think it is. Uh, and I don't know too much about um, functional programming. It's never, I, I think it's a niche type of programming. I have nothing against it, but uh, don't worry. What do you think about Angular? Uh, I've never used it. I looked at it. It was a mess. I think when, when they went from Angular 2 to 3, I think it was a total rewrite as far as I understand. I think with Angular, you'd be finding yourself working for very large corporations. I think the mojo today is with React and Vue, I think is, but there's, I'm sure there's a lot of jobs in Angular. It depends on the type of business you want to work for. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Should I quit Python and just do jQuery? Yeah, I think that's probably a very good business decision. You want to quit everything else and use jQuery and classic ASP. Or even better, you want to go to Perl CGI with jQuery. That seems to be the best uh, route. What do you think about, that's a joke, by the way, guys, that's a joke. Those are very old technologies. What do you think about Redux with React for state management? I don't have a comment because I have not used Redux with React. If it works for your project, uh, really, there's a buzzing sound? All right, I don't know. Can anybody else hear a buzzing sound from the mic? Let me know. There could be, I got a bad connection going on somewhere. Let me know. Uh, can you talk about contact form functionality back end? I'm a new dev. Con can you talk about contact form functionality back end? Okay, Charles. Yeah, if you want to create a contact form, what I would do is uh, just create forms with HTML, understand HTTP. A good HTML course should teach you that. And then you got to process that form. Uh, okay, what's the one here? 
I want to hear, tell me, I'm going to scroll down below for later comments. Do you hear a buzzing sound? Uh, thanks, buddy, if this is good. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you hear a buzzing sound. Say, hear buzzing. Don't say yes. Yes, high pitch buzz. Wow. Really? Okay, that's no good. I wonder what's causing that. Uh, hold on a second. I'm going to check something here. High pitch buzzing sound. Huh. Okay, uh, sound is good. I hear a buzz in all your streams. Really? Okay. Uh, do you hear anything now? Let me know if you hear anything now. Deaf a buzz. Yeah, it's just a slight buzz. High pitch buzz. Uh, cool joke. Cobalt APO. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Um, okay, I'll have to check that after. My apologies, guys. That's weird. Technical issues. I switched to a... Uh, a new setup, so that's probably uh, what's going on there. Okay, now i got to find the right window. Where's the right window here? Is this the right window? Sorry, guys. i got so many windows open. I'm trying to find where the stream is at. <laughs> okay. Oh, here it is, maybe. Uh, just a tiny bit, but it's not noticeable. Buzz, buzz. Really? What the heck's going on there? That's weird. Okay, I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, just echo. I know I did that on purpose. Are you using a cloud lifter or mic preamp? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Maybe the cloud lifter is doing that. I have to check. Uh, no, I don't hear any rumor. Ha <laughs> ha. Echo. <laughs> what echo? Laugh out that our Savior has returned from the heavens. Sounds like you're in a server room. Yeah, I only hear the voices in my head. <laughs> All right. I'll try to answer more. Okay. I apologize for the buzz. I'm surprised. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> OBS pre work. Okay, okay. What else do we got here? Some more questions. How many projects should I have built before applying for jobs? I say two to three, and you feel comfortable. Something you can show. One day, people will ask, will walk past you and tell their kids, "That's the fan Mishik. He's got the best book in the live stream game." <laughs> That's it. This is amazing. I'm trying to use. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. If you're having trouble with the online dating, I think it's Boca. I think that's the key. So I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to put, put out my Boca hands in my uh, Tinder profile. I have a feeling it's going to help me with the online dating. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the ticket. How many projects should I got that one? Uh, JS isn't as scary as people make it out to be. I think it's the use of sync programming that throws devs off. Perhaps, perhaps. Uh, good night, Steph. I would like to know from you if you would like to know what the difference between standard JS versus v, v versus a React JS library D as primary. I'm not sure if I understand your question, dude. So now you got me thinking about the buzz. The buzz is buzzing in my head. My apology. Hey, if you guys give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs up if you like my Boca extreme Boca skills here. Let me know about the blurry hand thumbs up. That would be appreciated. If you don't like my bokeh, please give me two thumbs down uh, and I'll switch to an iPhone in the next stream. Uh, do you think companies will start looking for more, will start looking more at outsourcing dev projects overseas now that they're used to remote work? No, no. I think the biggest, I think if remote outsourcing is a thing, if you have, um, a big organization. I think for small, medium-sized business, they'll stick to uh, local. Um, I don't think it's a huge issue there because the biggest problem with outsourcing is communication. Talking about newbie position, I just heard a classmate say PHP will make me starve. Well, your classmate is uh, hes a bit of a baby. I'm going to do this. I'm reluctant to, to do this, but in response to your classmate, I'm going to do this. All right. Uh, hold on. Let me shift this off here. Hold on. The sound effects. Could be the sound effects. Okay. So this is your, this is your friend. Okay. I'll stop. Uh, yeah. That's not true. Uh, Java was made in 1995. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember when Java was like the brand new language on the block. Yeah, I remember that well. Uh, hey, Steph. 
I would like to know, okay, I did that one already. Let's go on, let's go on, go on. Uh, Rust. Estevan Mischuk used Rust. I have not used Rust, so I don't have an opinion, although my C++ buddy loves Rust. Mm. Learning moving along from JS to React, is it normal to hit wall, meaning very steep learning? It is normal, or is there something in between I'm missing? I don't know. It, it depends on how well you know your JavaScript. Are you comfortable with JavaScript? Are you comfortable with the DOM? You should be able to transverse the DOM with, uh, pretty easily. Uh, you have to know ES6 as well for React, so you have to know that as well. I don't know. I would have to see what your skills are in terms of JavaScript to be able, be able to answer that. Coca-Cola or Pepsi? I generally like Coca-Cola. I don't drink soft drinks too often because it, it's not good for the teeth. I get cavities. Um, same thing with Red Bull, by the way. It's not good for the teeth. Um, but if I do drink Coca-Cola, I go for the Coca-Cola in the bottle, in the bottle. It tastes much better than the ones in the can. Uh, what is better between Java and JavaScript? They're two different languages. You should do my, uh, coders career path. Um, where is it? Here it is. You should do that webinar. It's free. Coders career path. It's going to help you understand the difference between JavaScript and Java. Uh, they're just two different beasts. By the way, uh, I also, if you're interested, I have a boot camp. I call it my mentoring program. If you want the full experience of all the training here, you can check it up. All the links are below. So let me go back. Let's see if I'll answer some more questions for you guys. Um, PHP is a great language, but JavaScript is present and future. I can guarantee you that PHP will be around as long as JavaScript. How many of y'all apply for entry-level dev jobs requiring minimum five years experience? <laughs> I give the strategy. If you look in my previous streams, you will see um, you will see there's a seven steps to getting a job. There's a video where you can watch, and that's going to help you there. I'm going to quit everything for Java applets. That's it. The future is Java applets. You're going to have to uh, resurrect AWT. But, uh, yeah, it's all about Java applets now. Uh, thanks, buddy. It's good, good. All right, cool, cool. No, no buzz, no joke. COBOL or APL? Yeah, I think you got to go for the modern COBOL language. Yes, high-pitched buzz, really. There's a slight buzz. Sound is good. There's, I hear a buzz on all your streams. Really? Okay. Slight buzz is heard. Buzz, buzz. Okay, that's no good. There's a bit of mic feedback. Really? Let me see if, uh, hold on a second. Where are we here? Okay, we're here. Let's go here. Um, does this, tell me if this helps. Hold on. Let's see if I can get this. Come on, you. Come on, you. All right, all right. So, does, does this, this help, help at all? all? Is, is this, this clear? Does, does it make it, it make easy, easy to understand, to understand what, what I'm talking, talking about? about? Yeah, let, let me know. know. Let, let me, know. me know. Um, okay, enough of that. All right, let's continue. Uh, are you using a cloud after I am? It could be echo, echo, echo. I only hear voices in my head. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's it. That was my God voice. When I go into God mode, I use that to, to let you guys... OBS works pretty well for me. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some checks. I wonder why it's a bit bitter now. I can, I can, buzz can be heard when the volume is at max level. At medium level, I can't hear it. Okay. I'm a very, uh, I have very sensitive hearing. I don't know. I'm very disturbed that I'm hearing a buzzing. I just don't like that at all. Uh, Roger from South Africa. Hey, if you're new to the channel, my name is Steph. I'm known as the 160, let me say it again. I'm known as the 169-year-old dev. You can find me on Google. Just type in that search term. This is the official salute, code long and profitably. That's it. I'm uh, stealing that from Star Trek, and just in case you don't know. If you're using a mic preamp, then it must be your wire, or if there's a faulty wiring that causes the ground. Yeah, probably, I'm going to have to check that, because I just hooked up a new system. But somebody, some people are saying that uh, they're always hearing buzzing, so I'm going to have to double check all that. My apologies, guys. Just turn down the volume a little bit. You should be cool. How much does 
developing on a max speed up the development process. I don't think it develops, speeds it up at all, in all honesty. I, I really don't, unless you just got to configure your machine, you know. Uh, also, could be that your wall outlet might not be grounded. Could be. It could be. It could. All those things could be. Any eye care tips? Yeah, code in a light room and don't have dark mode on your screen. That will help you with your eye fatigue. Let me know what do you think about spring. Spring, spring. I love the spring. You're talking about Java Spring Framework. If I was going to use any framework in Java, that would be the one. Okay, okay. All right, so. Hello, hey, hey, yo, whoa, oh, hey, yo, thanks for joining, appreciate it. Uh, how to know if a project needs to be implemented using microservices instead of monolith? Ah, that's a good question. I look at microservices as supporting technology or support functionality. So I we've implemented microservices before to uh, to increase the lifespan of an old code base. And um, so I, I would use it to implement supportive technology. Uh, I'm inclined to anything of any substance, any project of any substance, I'm inclined to use monolithic architecture supported by microservices. But maybe because I'm old school, I kind of like to do that. What's your opinion on JS in the backend node? I, I, I think I would only use node if I needed to do some high-speed asynchronous stuff. I didn't like the NPM. I thought it was a mess. The dependencies uh, chain, I thought it was a mess at the time. I haven't looked at it in a few years. Apparently, it is still a mess, but it's not my personal opinion because I haven't looked at it in years. But the founder of node has moved away from node because of that reason. And uh, I found out after I determined that NPM was a mess, and I found out this guy determined it was a mess, so he started something called Deno, which I had not looked at. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Can you clear the concept of serverless? I'll have to do that in a dedicated stream. But, uh, you know, I'll do that in a, in a soon-to-be-released stream. Your last name is Polish, Mishuk. It's Ukrainian, in fact, but yeah, close enough. I think using Boca to blur out my face will help with my Tinder profile. That I could help, actually. I could help. You know, what I found out on Tinder is that, 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 at least from my experience, since I only look at women profiles, not I only swipe on women profiles, not men. Um, so, I find that they're actually masters at uh, photography. Uh, it's it's very interesting when you see somebody; their photos look, and then you go on a date, and it's like, wow, these, this guy's good with. This woman is good with the photos there. All right, uh, sleepless in South Africa. Well, welcome to the stream. I'll try to I'll try to help you fall asleep. Watch those null states. Yeah, yeah. Fresh bootcamp grad looking for a Python Django job. What type of project should I start to pad my resume? What you should do, Heath Health? Is that Heath? Excuse me, Heath Lester. Welcome to the stream. Um, congratulations on. Uh, getting through your uh, boot camp. What I would do is, uh, there's a video where I talk about how to, the seven steps to getting your first job. You should go watch that video. It's on YouTube. Briefly, in a nutshell, you want to go out there and do two to three, two to three free projects that you do for some, a nonprofit, a small business. You want to show pros prospective employers that you can actually work and build real projects and work with people. I hope that makes sense, okay? I'm looking to get a junior developer job for the summer. How can I be more convincing to my future employers or should I straight up work for free? I get, just gave the tip on how to do that. So you should follow that, check out my previous video. There's a big seven in the thumbnail. Um, all right, 140 people. We're starting to build up a little bit. If you like this stream, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Uh, I like this focus. See, see, oh, look at that. Good. All right, the focus was working. Um, I'm a camera nut. My hobby is videography and cameras, so I'm always uh, concerned about 
these type of things. What is the best way, do you think, to show companies abroad that you deserve the opportunity to work with them? Great portfolio, coupled with a good resume. Make sure you have good communication skills. How are we doing for time? 39 minutes, okay, 127. Uh, Google, thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. Uh, Google develops AngularJS, which is different from Angular Framework. Which one is more in use? I don't know. I, would, I have not looked into that. I could not say. Good evening, Stefan. I want to ask you, ask if you have a course on Java, but more importantly, if you mentor people who are lazy, fatigued. Um, yeah, I do have a mentoring program. You can look at the link below, check out all the details. I do not have a Java course specifically. I should because that's you know, I'm the most experienced of my coding career is with Java. But if you do my Python and JS course, for you to learn Java will be pretty easy because the concepts are the same. Uh, kiss, marry, and kill. Which languages would you select for those? Kiss, marry, and kill. Owen Harris, I am not sure the reference. My apologies. I love Python C Sharp, but I recognize that JavaScript is conquering everything. The only thing I regret is not having learned it before as I see JavaScript as unstoppable. Well, if you know C Sharp and Python, it will take you just a couple of days to learn JavaScript, so it's no big deal. It's no big deal. You'll be fine. I have full confidence in you, George. You will do fantastic. Does your mentorship include projects that people can choose Mernstack? Also, is Mernstack a great choice for freelance? Um, I teach JavaScript in the web stack, and then you can just go learn uh, the rest if you, for Mern, the node, and so on. My mentoring program is language agnostic, meaning it can be used and applied to any language. People join the mentoring program for the support community, for my opinion on things, besides all the foundational training. I have a totally different training approach, as far as I know, than any other people. I concentrate on key fundamentals so that you can then go and learn anything you want very easily on your own. As somebody commented recently, they said, after doing my courses, they're able to learn without having to ask me too many questions because they've learned those fundamentals. You got to... This is an electricity ground issue, guys. No buzz here. Sounds fine to me. I'll have to check into that. Maybe I'll just check into that. Sounds great, like a VCR playing. <laughs> no sound problem, no, no. So I'm gonna have to check that. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, buzz even with echo. Sound is fine. Sounds like a bad ground. Yeah, it could be. I think it's something close to the mic, maybe a fan or something. We should all learn Ruby. Hello from Netherlands. It's almost like you don't have noise cancellation. It's like a high frequency noise, like I could hear a pin drop beside you. Uh, if Tinder includes Boca, I work for a dev shop with about eight devs on varying, a varying degree of skill. We are thinking of moving from ACFWP to SCSS from scratch to headline to headless CMS React with Tailwind CSS. Mistake to jump on bandwagon. I just let the, um, I let the demand from the clients out there dictate which stacks you use. When I was freelancing, we would go into a job and based on the requirements of the job, we would choose the technology for that job. I, you know, we had our, I had my own Java-based framework and I tried to find jobs that were suitable towards my framework because I was highly productive with my own framework. It was an MVC web stack framework, Pojo based. But uh, many times I would find myself using technologies I never used before just to get the job done. I look at all these languages as tools. That's all they're, they're just tools. You use whatever tools you need to use. Max slows me down to be honest. If I were, okay, in terms of speed, if I were, if I were going to steal a salute from Star Trek, it's, it's only appropriate to give Ruby a red shirt. <laughs> yeah. That's the uh, hunter. That's the, uh, that's the comment of the night. Actually, that's the comment of the week, by the way. That's a double nerd reference. 
I have to give you double guns for that one. That's fantastic. That was great. Uh, fantastic. Okay, we'll give him the uh, the triangle. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 just okay. So here we go. Fantastic comment of the week. That's good. If you got that, you're true. If you got that double reference there, phew, you're a major nerd. C sharp is a good line for web. Yeah, if you're doing um, you're doing a Microsoft based tech for sure. Why not? If Tinder includes Boca return date, L's return, try again. Uh, if I was, I was just watching your freelance course, I have you on both screens. <laughs> Practice makes, well, thanks for picking up the freelance course, dude. Appreciate it. Uh, live long and prosper. There we go. I, I've, I've uh, rebranded this to uh, code long and prosper or code, code long and profitably. That's what I've rebranded this for. Uh, this stream is making me segfault, hacking through. Uh, how important is it, is studying design patterns for a junior associate developer? And do you have any favorite resources for this? I think that design patterns, after your fundamentals, I think design patterns and refactoring are the skills that you should pick up. I have links below to a design patterns book from O'Reilly. I chose O'Reilly because O'Reilly is just generally very good with their um, their books. So yeah, I would recommend that. I said, do you f do you feel about the Unix design philosophy? Do you feel about the Unix design ph philosophy? Uh, I'm a bit obsessed with it. Oh, by the way, I use Arch. Uh, NPN is fine. I don't have too much experience with that, so I couldn't say. Uh, Bailey. But if you like it and it works for you, then use it, man. Steph, why do people say Linux is good for back-end development? It's fine. Linux is good for back-end development. Uh, Windows is fine for back-end development. Mac is fine for back-end development. They all have their pros and cons. It just depends what you're doing. Uh, serverless is just for letting someone else run your server. Uh, I guess you can say that. How to change the weather using JavaScript? I believe me, I tried. Do you think a team should deploy early and often? When you're doing, uh, when you're first developing your application, you're developing your MVP, your minimum viable product. Yes, you want to get it out the door, into the hands of the end users as quickly as possible. When you have a mature code base and you have a client base using your code, then you got to be much more careful about your updates and deployments. Excuse me. There we go. So yeah, that's my answer to you on that one. How do you start a program? Like, where do I begin? Hello world. How do I start to learn to program, perhaps? Well, you should start to learn using my courses. Uh, You'll learn very quickly with them, but don't take my word for it in terms of their qualities. Go check out the reviews. Just type in Studio Web Reviews or StudioWeb.com Reviews. you find them on Google. Hey, Stefan, how do you feel about learning to code by using Code Academy for a beginner to intermediate? I think what I would suggest doing, and I'm biased, I have my own platform, which is unique, interactive, and highly regarded. Do that first. And uh, it will get you into uh, job ready skills very quickly. And then from there, you can look at other resources like Code Academy or wherever else you want to go. If you feel the need, that's my suggestion. Um, there's all the links below. So um, where are we now? So if I go to Komodo, um, hold on. So there's my... My psychology course, I highly recommend everybody take if you want to learn quickly. This one changes people's lives. You can see my reviews here on, on Google, 162 reviews. You can read, read. You know, Here's a guy. After months of struggling with multiple Udemy courses, YouTube videos, and various other tutorials, I came across Studio Web. That's my uh, platform. I decided to make an inquiry, and instead of getting some BS auto-reply, I got an answer from Steph himself. That's me. His honest and practical, practical, practice, no, practical advice excuse me, was invaluable to me, so I decided to take the plunge and sign up for the mentorship. I've learned more in the first few days than I learned in the last couple months. I'm just going to read that again. 
Um, let me just uh, hold on. I gotta I gotta set this up. All right, all right. hold on a second. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, stream quality. Okay, we're gonna have some stream quality problems. I learned more in the first few days than I learned in the last few months. All right, that hurt my ears for some reason. Okay, so I did that, that silly little thing. So, um, yeah, so you want to check out my packages. There we go. Complete web developer. That's what I'm going to look at, and I will get you going pretty quick. All right. I had to shamelessly self-promote that way. My apologies. Ah, are small projects like to-do apps and blogs really good for your portfolio? Yeah, no, you want to build apps for somebody else that's the key build apps for a small business a small startup uh, a non-profit the key is building apps for somebody else that's good little apps like you suggested to do whatever that's cool but prospective employers will be 10 times more impressed 10 times more impressed if you actually build little projects for some somebody else a real you know a bakery a butcher uh a local coffee shop, uh, somebody starting a new whatever type of business. Trust me, the key is to be able to show that you can work with other people and deliver on projects. I hope that makes sense. Uh, round your boca is. There we go. How are we doing for time? Okay, 50 minutes are going to be... Um, hi, is, ja is Java as strong or as powerful as my coffee? Ask for a friend. <laughs> Uh, everyone should learn Scratch in 2021. Dudge me by my OS, do you? <laughs> uh, is JavaScript DS and algorithm is important? In JavaScript, data structure and algorithm is important. Only if you're doing very particular type of JavaScript programming. If not, no. Python or Golang? Depends on the job. It always depends on the jobs. These things are, um, depends on the job. When do you upgrade to HTML? I heard C, that C++ was a beginner language, so I was just trying to figure out where to branch out. <laughs> okay, for beginners, this is a joke. That was just a joke. Uh, how do you master C++? You write it. All right. Hi, Stefan. McGill has an intensive full-stack JavaScript this summer. I am skeptical if it is possible to learn that much in three months. It usually an 18-month part-time course. Any th advice? It depends on the teacher and the quality of the curriculum. At the end of the day, it depends on the teacher and the quality of the curriculum. With my full-stack course, people get jobs within a few months. Uh, not everybody, but people have. It also depends on your aptitudes and so on. It's possible. That's what I'm saying. Can I put Java? Okay. Uh, now that we can use JS on the front and back, no, that's super cool. Uh, for freelancing, I use Gridsome, Static Site Generator, Strap.js, Headless CMS for PWA's websites. Okay, that's cool. Red shirts always first to die. Exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, what's going on? What's going on? All right. I'm going to answer a few more questions, and then I'm going to... I'm going to go check out... Perfect sound. <laughs> Is that a joke, Jansen? Uh, I don't know. CSCS container queries look cool. Okay, I'll answer just a few more questions. I'll head off. I have a job in PHP or Laravel because of Studio Web. Mr. Mishuk knows his he. People listen to this man. What he said is what happens in the field. How do I know I'm in the field and see his words? I appreciate that, Scott. Much appreciated. So, experienced guy is confirming what I tell you. I'm not, uh, I'm not some oracle. I just, I've been doing this since 1994, 95. So I just, I'm just relaying my experience to you guys. That's all. Um, is it bad to learn backend, excuse me, is it bad to learn backend software dev before front end if I pursue, if I'm pursuing to be full stack? I would learn like, you know, to be able to do the full stack, you got to learn like the basis of the web, 
So you should learn at least a little bit of HTML and a little bit of CSS, just a touch of CSS, just a touch, and a touch of JavaScript, and then you can jump into the back end because if you're doing back end, inevitably you're going to have to push text data up to the front end. So you should know at least a little bit about the front end so you can just, you know, at least be able to do that. Um, Hunter. I'm looking forward to the mentorship program. I've learned more than I did in college from your HTML and CSS course. I think the other courses will be worthwhile as well. I appreciate that. When is your Boca course coming out? I don't know. Boca, Boca lore is secret knowledge. I'm not sure if I should share that because it's, uh, you have to be careful. Um, there we go. All right. I guess that's it. We're almost at an hour. An hour passes very quickly. Thanks for joining the stream, guys. If you like the stream, do please give me a thumbs up. Uh, talk about Flutter. I think Flutter is a good tech. I like Flutter. Um, let me know still if you're still hearing the buzzes, buzzing sound. I just want to do a little uh, testing before we leave. Let me know if you still hear the buzzing sound. Um, yeah, that's about it. It's Blazer C Sharp. So, again, once again, thanks for watching the stream. Uh, let me know if you hear the buzzing sound now, if you still hear the buzzing. I don't know. Hey, Steph, uh, I'll answer. Setter gets the last question. Hey, Steph, I'm going to graduate soon from CS course, but I feel so overwhelmed and unable to actually work on real stuff. What can I do to overcome this? Should I try out your course? Yeah, Sarah, give out my course a try. Listen, money back guarantee. I don't want anybody to pay if they don't get something out of the training. So try out the course, go for the full stack, and um, and just, see, you know, you, you'll probably be doing a lot of review, but you also probably gonna learn a bunch of details you haven't been taught before. That's what I hear from people so often. There are hundreds of video lessons and well over a thousand quiz questions. I have, um, there's a depth to my uh, training that you don't see elsewhere. Uh, a lot of, you see a lot of training is very broad, but not deep into the knowledge. 